So a little bit about uh, Amrit and our involvement with the U.S. Department of Commerce. First time I spoke there was 16 years ago uh, at a different event. This is the third time here, and thanks for inviting me back again. Uh, hopefully that means something. Uh, all right, I won't read all these points to you. You can read faster than I can speak. Um, the old India was about cows and the Taj Mahal and snake charmers. The new India is very, very different. How many of you have are been, are been doing business in India? You want to raise your hands? Okay, just a few. Okay, so listen carefully. Uh, the rest of you, and even the ones who've been to India, because things have changed quite a bit. So don't think about the Taj Mahal anymore. Think about modern India. Okay. Um, just a few weeks ago, they inaugurated uh, one of the longest bridges in India uh, that connects one end of the largest city in India, Mumbai to the other end, to New Mumbai, and uh, I think it runs 17 kilometers. So it's by not, not the long, longest bridge in the world, but so certainly the longest one in India. Okay? And it was constructed at the cost of billions of dollars. Okay? On the right, you see a picture of a, the Jewar Airport outside of New Delhi. It will be inaugurated later this year, and it will be the largest airport in all of Asia which means larger than, larger than Changi in Singapore, larger than Shanghai's airports, and so on, okay? It already has a code, I think it's DXD or DBX, something like that, okay? Indian Prime Minister was trying to get it launched sooner. They contracted the work with a Swiss company because elections are coming up, and they wanted to see if they could launch it before the elections. That apparently ain't gonna happen, okay? But it will be up this year for sure. The pace of infrastructure development in India has accelerated dramatically. But I won't dwell on that further. Um, let me give you a little bit of a flavor of India's consumer market. I've got three different examples. Um, many of you probably do not follow cricket. But cricket in India is bigger than baseball, football, um, soccer uh, combined. Okay? So it is, it is the game that most Indians think about. India now dominates cricket. Used to be Britain and Australia and New Zealand, but in terms of the market for cricket, the biggest amount of money is spent in India. So at the bottom there you see uh, California Arms using a famous cricketer as their, uh, as their spokesperson. The reason I'm showing Arms is India imported 331 million pounds of almonds last year. The largest consumer of almonds in the world. Most of them came from California, over a billion dollars in revenue for uh, California almond growers. And those of you who are in the food business know that the next stage will be products that include almonds as an ingredient. Okay? Uh, China, by contrast, only imported 143 million. Okay? India imported twice as much as China, and China's GDP is four times the size of India, just to give you an indication of the size and growth of this market. Almonds have been consumed in India for a long time, but California almonds are relatively new in the last decade or so. Okay. Um, can, you, can you play the video for SK Lauder? This is from Instagram in India. Okay. Now, can you play the central video? Hey Kajal, let's play a quick game. Okay, let's do it. What is the first thing that comes to your mind when you say love? Of my life, my husband. Passion. Acting. Fun. Time spent with my baby needy. Health. A nutritious diet. And central women, multivitamin and protein. Thank you Kajal. Thank you. Bye. You heard about the market in Brazil and China earlier today. What's different about the market in India from those two videos? What do you observe? Can you say that loudly? English. English. Okay. Um, now, India has 24 official languages. However, because India has that many languages, people communicate in English. The upper middle class, which would be your market, you don't have to translate your materials. Yeah. You don't have to 
apply in a foreign language. There are still many differences about India, but that's something to keep in mind. Packaging of products in India has become very modern and very sophisticated compared to what it used to be. I have, uh, I can't pass these around, but I'll show you a couple of things. I showed the, the vitamins ad, so here's a package of Centrum. Looks like something you would buy here, but this is actually produced in India by a contract manufacturer in India for Centrum. Um, what do you think this might be? You can say, you know in here? Looks like a condom, right? Okay, yeah, some people are shy to say that. It's not a condom. It's actually single serve of shampoo and conditioner. Okay? Just one helping, right? You shampoo your hair, and use the conditioner, you're done. This sells for about 16 cents. Okay? And this is from Dove, right? So, famous American brand. Okay? Just giving you a flavor of the kinds of things that happen. Yes, sir? Slide. Are you implying that Bollywood and cricket are the keys to branding in India? If, if you can't afford to hire Rihanna for $10 million and you can spend only a million or two, then you would use those things. But most of you in this room are not going to spend that kind of money on celebrities. You know, maybe a couple of people here will. This is just, I picked examples that everybody could identify with and they are not our clients, so we can talk about them freely. But no, I'm not asking you to go hire a cricketer or a Bollywood star. Uh, yes, yeah. Um, so here's another way to look at India. Indians love America and American products and American culture and American brands, despite what you might even read in the New York Times. Okay, for those of you who follow that newspaper. Okay, uh, most. Indians who are in the upper middle class will have at least one relative in the US. That includes India's commerce minister, it includes the previous prime minister, it includes the foreign minister who has two of his three children living in the United States permanently. Okay? So there's a lot of strong connectivity. Now, if you heard the State of the Union last, uh, last week, you might have heard President Biden mention the American economy is strong, it's growing faster than all of Europe, growing faster than the rest of the world, there's one country among the G20 that's going faster than the US. And I'll let you take a guess at which country that is. Okay? The numbers here are understated. On the very right, the, the, the growth rate for India, that was for Q3 of 2023. Q4 growth was even higher. Okay? So uh, it's a big market and it's growing. Um, there are a lot of challenges with India. Okay? And, uh, uh, you know, I talked about the uh, diversity in languages. Uh, the fragmented distribution is the biggest challenge. Okay? And the opportunities that overcome that today. Um, so the old way to enter India, which most of you might have tried before, you know, I, the most common request we get from potential clients is, hey, uh, help us select one, uh, one distributor that can handle all of India. We have all these inquiries coming from India to distribute our product. Okay. Today, that's really not a good solution for many, many reasons, uh, which I won't get into right now for the, because of the shortage of time. Uh, but um, we're passing around a 100 rupee note. Who has, who are the people who have it? Can you just raise it? Okay. Um, do you have two of them? Okay. Can you pass one to the next row, please? Okay. Uh, I have a have a light? I don't know. So here is a magnified version of it. The word 100 rupees is written in so many different scripts. Not languages, scripts. This is not like English versus French. This is like English versus Arabic. I can't even read the letters in the other languages. But the advantage of that is that the Indian government does not expect you to label in all of those languages. You can just label in English and get away with it. So the old way that people succeeded in India, just to emphasize that point, was hey, I had great success in Japan or China or Dubai and I just want to duplicate that in India. But India's history and current situation is so different from other countries that if you don't account for India's uniqueness, you're going to fail. Okay? 
Many American companies have failed in India, not because India wasn't a good market, but they cop copycatted a strategy from elsewhere. The CEO of Coca-Cola, the former CEO of Mutharkin, said, we have trouble in India until we realize we have to work the way India needs us to work, not the way that Coca-Cola needs India to work. Sounds like a simple statement, but it's a, it's a very deep insight. Now, Mutar Kent spent the first 14 years of his life in India. Maybe that gave him some of that uh, background. Okay. So, there are many, many different ways that you might consider getting revenue from India that are beyond that go beyond that first thing that I said. Right? Uh, so, one is to license your technology or your brand to an Indian company and perhaps you supply one key ingredient and let them add the water and the other easily available ingredients and produce your product. Okay? So that's, that's one way for some companies. Used to be only the large companies would do that, but today Indian manufacturers are so sophisticated. In fact, if you buy a Unilever or Procter & Gamble or Amway product in India, chances are that it was manufactured by a third party in India, even though their revenues are into the billions of dollars. Uh, so those third-party manufacturers can really manufacture for anybody, okay? And some of them are exporting product to the U.S. already, so they are pretty high quality, okay? I've got a couple of examples of what we recommended to people. Uh, again, I'm not going to read every slide here. Uh, uh, so in the past, many, how many of you have thought about India but are not doing business there? You want to raise your hands? Quite a few. Okay. This this has been the I, I, I first came to the Natural Product Expo maybe 15 years ago, and this statement has been true for all 15 years. But today you cannot ignore India for many many reasons. The size of the market, the growth I told you about already. But here are some other reasons. Okay. India has the largest diaspora in the world. Over 25 million people of Indian origin live elsewhere, including 4 million in this country. When they, get back, when they go back home, they take gifts for their families and often the gifts are the products that your companies make. My parents, for the first time they came here, they took a suitcase full of American pistachios. Okay? When the wonderful company approached her to say, we want to sell our pistachios in India, I said, don't worry, I know you have a market there. Okay? Uh, pistachios are the same price as peanuts. You know, that's like that's unthinkable to my dad. Okay? Um, so there are people in India who want your product but cannot easily get it. Okay? People find a way to fulfill their demand. Okay? So there are some gray market operators who will buy their product in Singapore or the US, have a relative, bring that suitcase full and actually sell it. Okay? So there you are getting a net sale fine. But there are other less scrupulous distributors who will buy expired product from another country okay? and sell that in India. Even worse, there are people who will take that expensive bottle of fragrance or, you know, personal care product, uh, buy those in a third world country, that's not India, and then refill something that isn't your product and sell it. So they're making lots of money, but you're losing reputation. Well, that product doesn't work as well as the one that you intended to, right? So there are many reasons why you want to get the share of that market and clean out, you know, these uh, unscrupulous operators, okay? Um, there's also, you know, one of our clients was a Clorox company that owns bird's bees. First time we took them to India, they said, you know, we have no business in India. We can't, you can't buy any of our product there. And my, my colleague in Bangalore said, no, I'll show you. And she went to one store where genuine Clorox product was selling. Okay? It wasn't a fake. They took it back and verified it. So that was one problem. I mean, product was getting there, but through, through gray market channels. And then I took them to a small store when we found a product called Chlorix, okay? the same logo, okay, except it was spelled, you know, uh, differently, and so the small manufacturer managed to avoid immediate prosecution, and Clorox didn't have a business there, they didn't have any money to go take legal action against a company like this, okay. Now, 95% of American of Indian companies are very scrupulous, so I'm not saying that this is a huge problem, but it is, an indication that customers want your product and can't get it. Okay? So by ignoring that market, you are losing out on demand because they are certainly not fulfilling all the demand you would have. Uh, in the meantime, companies from other parts of the world 
are entering India. Korean personal care companies are doing very well. The Australians are doing well with dairy products. Uh, New Zealand, Japan, you name it. So, sitting still and ignoring the market is not a good option. Okay. Um, so there are many different ways in which you can enter the market in India. You can certainly sell through Indian distributors and this. I described that complicated diagram. I showed you that complicated diagram for fragment distribution. And if you want to discuss that in detail, we can talk about it outside. Uh, but the two major ways of physical distribution are in what in India they call physical retail, which is thousands of small stores, hundreds of thousands of small stores. And there's what they call modern retail, which is like the big box store. Big box stores typically in India are selling low price products, so they are not ideal for a product made in America and then exported to India, but there is a potential market there. And there are big box is only about 10% of the overall physical retail market in India today. So getting into those small stores, you know, hundreds of thousands of them, takes quite a bit of effort and that's what's discouraged people in the past. Okay? Uh, I've listed a number of other methods today that are available, right? You can create your own subsidiary to sell, that we have much better control. And setting up a subsidiary in India is much easier than it was five years ago. The new government of Narendra Modi, which has been in power for the last nine years, has really simplified a lot of these things. So it's still not trivial, it's not like setting up a company in California, but uh, it can be black boxed into a process that someone like us could handle for you. Okay? E-commerce has become a significant player in India particularly accelerated by the pandemic and by one other factor. Now people of Indian origin can tell me what that factor is if you want. Anybody? Okay. It's the digital public infrastructure setup called the UPI, the Universal Payment Interface, which makes it very easy for people who don't have credit cards to make a payment in seconds, much faster than our whole MasterCard system of sticking a card into a reader and having 20 different ways that those, those card readers work. So all the merchant needs is a QR code and they are done. They don't need any machine, any device, nothing. Okay. So that has changed the way that Indians pay. Not you know, the 100 rupee notes I'm talking about, and nobody in India wants them. Okay. They can, uh, they much rather pay electronically. Okay. Um, you can uh, consider setting up a joint venture with an Indian company. There are many trustworthy Indian companies where you can do that and relieve yourself of a lot of the difficulty in detail about working in India. And all the big guys, all the big multinational corporations in India have some kind of contract or joint venture relationship in India. Not because the Indian law requires it, but because it makes sense in the market to do it. Unlike a large neighbor of India whom I will not name, that forces you to do business with the government and then you find that your product is being sold in a third or fourth shift outside your control. That's not what I'm talking about. These are honest, hardworking entrepreneurs that have come of age after India liberalized in 1991 and they have global ambitions. So they're great partners to, to consider in a JV or other contract relationship. Okay? One simple thing you can do is ship your product in bulk media. So if you make pills or tablets or gels or liquid, you know, uh, you can ship large containers and then have an Indian partner bottle them and print the packaging and so you reduce the cost of shipping. You can add local ingredients, you know, as something as simple as water or something else that's available in India. The packaging can be absolutely world class. Okay? You were working with a hair care company that said beyond the ingredient product, what's most important is that our packaging should be as good as L'Oreal or better. We had no trouble finding people who could do that, you know, to represent the shades and colors of the various kinds of hair color they made. Okay. Um, they can also localize the product. As an example here from GNC, you see they, they, their protein powder comes in various flavors, some of which are clearly Indian, you know, mango smoothie and meva kulfi. Uh, these are very specific to India. This is the second most common question we get asked. You know, you had Gunyan, you told us all about all of these uh, factors relating to India. Just tell me one answer and give me a way that I can get into India. You know, we don't want to do anything more, just give us that answer. Okay? Unfortunately, that's not ever possible because each company is unique. 
your market maturity is different, your competitive set is different, your pricing points may be different, and Indians will buy high-priced American products, by the way. At least one person in the room here, whom I won't name because of confidentiality, their product is the highest selling volume product in that market, natural market. Okay? And we found that quite a bit of product was selling in India through these grey market means already. Okay? So there's no shortage of money in India if you can explain the value claim. Um, okay, so time to focus on India is now. And it's if you wait five years, you will definitely lose out to foreign competition and the market and Indian competition, and the market may not be as available to you. Alrighty, so uh, I'm open for questions now, and if you want to meet me later uh, in the conference, I'm here through Saturday. You can take the upper the QR code on the top, and that will enable you to ask for an appointment this week. The one at the bottom is if you want to talk to me next week onwards. Okay, so those should work. Um, questions? Yes. What do you think are the biggest mistakes that people make when they try to enter India? Okay, so the question is, what are the biggest mistakes that people make when they try to enter India? Okay. There's many. Okay. One is assuming that India is a monolith. India's population is larger than all of Europe. Okay? India has more languages than all of Europe, more cultures than all of Europe. So would you enter Italy the same way you would enter Finland or the UK the same way that you would enter Albania? Probably not. Okay? So you have to keep that in mind when you think about India. The second mistake is the one I referred to already. You know, select one distributor. Just make it simple. One distributor handling all of India. Now, every distributor you talk to in India, they say, yeah, I can. Now, I'm based in Mumbai, but I have a brother-in-law's cousin's neighbor who lives in, you know, New Delhi, and they can handle that, and I'm going to expand to Calcutta in a few weeks. You ask them a year later, and they haven't done any of that. And uh, so, you, you need to have the due diligence to really evaluate how serious they are about their clients. And sometimes that is hard to tell. Why? Most people in India will speak English, okay? This is the third common mistake. If you're American and you assume that they think American, okay, you are absolutely guaranteed to fail. Okay? This is not because Indians are deceptive or dishonest or anything like that, far from it. The way that Indians communicate is very different from the way that an American communicates. You know, here we are taught to say, call a spade a spade. Look me in the eye when you talk. Okay? Be direct. In India, being direct is considered a form of rudeness. Okay? So you have to be understated, but not as understated as the East Asian. So you can't copy your you know, Japanese, Korean, or Chinese success story and apply it to India. India is a mix of both, both extremes. And so you have to adapt your thinking. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Okay. Question, sir? Um, what is this? What is the approximate size of the natural market or na interest in natural products versus base products? Right, because okay. there's different income. There's uh, 13 different income levels or so in sure. in India, right? So, okay. so the question is, what is the level of interest in natural products versus other base products? Okay, and I have to give you a textured answer. Because when did Indians first start using natural products? About 5,000 years, right? <laughs> now today we are so excited about Terminate and Shilajit and Ashwagandha, right? All of those products have been used in India for thousands of years. They may not have had the science behind them as we define Western science, but that's our problem, not theirs, right? Those things work, and today Western science has validated it, right? So natural is not a fashionable thing in India today. It's always been there. Now today in India, there is concern and suspicion about chemical products, about products that are not natural. Okay? So that's what, you know, the marketing has to be turned a little bit to focus on that. Okay? Now, as far as price goes, it's common to hear that Indians are very price conscious. Okay? I restate that and say Indians are very value conscious. Okay? So if, you, if you're going to sell psyllium as a fiber to Indians, 
you know, and charge more than Metamucil does because you are some way better. It's not going to work because a product called Sade Sadhgur has been selling in India for hundreds of years at one tenth the price of Metamucil. And it works just fine. It's a natural product. It's, it's a basic fiber, right? So you have to look at your product and the market for it and figure out a way to present it. Now, there are companies importing Indian ingredients, processing them in the US, purifying them, and then exporting them back to India. Okay? We worked with such a company uh, some time ago. And the largest buyer of those products in India was buying retail from the US and including it in an ingredient and selling it essentially wholesale. So price sensitivity is not a significant factor if you know how to identify the market segment and present the right value proposition. Does that start to answer your questions? Okay. Good job. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, there are three of us who will be outside if you want to talk further. Do uh, you want to raise your hands? Arik and Smita and myself will be outside. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Good job.